in progress. Hello and welcome to another edition of A Priori Story Timeless. This one is a story about Kwafu. Kwafu uh, Shwe um, and I think that uh, you're going to enjoy this one. This one's a very nice teaching lesson for the youngins. Okay, there you go, Lin Lin. This is Xiaobu and Lin Lin here to enjoy and to help. Them stay warm. And the reading that we have today is from a, a book entitled Dragons, Gods, and Spirits from Chinese Mythology. And this one is a uh, text by Tao Tao Liu Sanders, uh, in illustrations by Johnny Pao. And Kua uh, Fu chases the sun. You guys both ready? Okay. <laughs> One of the giants living in the dawn of time was a man named Kwafu. Kwafu was an enormous and impressive person, but like many giants, he was not terribly intelligent. He loved to watch the sun rising in the east every morning and see it fall below the horizon in the west every evening. And he said to himself, I hate the darkness. Where is it that the sun disappears to in the west? Where does he hide himself till the next morning? If I could fix the sun in my sky, I need never live in darkness. He thought for some time. Then, I know, I will chase the sun and seize him so that I shall have his light all the time, both by night and day. Kwafu began his pursuit of the sun on the plains of North China. Being a giant, he had very long legs, and in one day, he covered over 2,000 miles. By evening, he was in sight of the place where the sun rested at night. Gleeful with the anticipation of success, he reached out his hands to seize the bright ball of fire. Then, Suddenly, he felt a terrible thirst, a thirst such as he had never known before and could not ignore. It seemed to attack his whole body, burning him up. He turned to the nearest stream and with one draft, drank it dry. It did no more to quench his thirst than a drop of water. He ran to another stream, then to another and another, but they too, were not enough. With his great giant steps, he strode back across the land he had covered during the chase, <coughs> drinking dry all the wells, streams, and rivers he passed, even draining the waters of the Yellow River and the Yangtze. Still, he thirsted. His only hope was to reach the sea, where surely he could at last find enough water to satisfy him. Before he could reach the shore, however, he fell down in exhaustion, and as the sun's last golden evening rays touched him lying there, stretched out on the ground, he gave a long sigh. <clears throat> Summoning all his strength, he flung his staff at the sun as a last gesture of anger. Then, closed his eyes in sleep. Next morning, when the white rays of the morning sun shone once again from the east and touched the figure of the sleeping giant, he was a giant no more. In his place was a massive mountain range. To the west of the mountains was a grove of trees in the shape of a long staff. And although the trees had not even been there the day before, now their leaves were green and their fruit glimmered pink and luscious among the branches. These trees had grown from the peach tree staff that Kwafu had thrown at the sun, and they bore the most succulent fruit ever known. Peaches that will always revive a man will quench the most raging thirst and encourage him not to give up. 
People say that the body of the giant formed the great range of mountains in the province of Shanxi, nowadays called Mount Chu. At the western end of the range lies a country which to this day is still called the Peach Tree Grove. The Kwa Fu Si Si Sui Zi, which is Kwa Fu, you know, raises the sun. This is a, an aphorism in China that suggests the idea of a, an overestimation of the self. You know, somebody trying to reach beyond one's ability. And so it's a very uh, important and powerful lesson. Did you get that, Lin Lin and Xiaobo? Okay, good job. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat>